It's a lot easier to work with short, coarse hair. Is your hair? No, what? how would my hair be on a weft? Hi, it's Amanda, welcome to my channel. Over the past few weeks, I've been experimenting with eliminating some, if not all of the roadblocks that I face when I sit down on a weekly basis to twist my hair. But before I finish solving all the ills of this process, I wanted to just hop on here and share with you 10 of the time consuming issues I've been facing when I sit down to twist my short, dense, coarse, type four natural hair. Number one, sectioning hair is a whole routine in itself. My hair is very dense, but it's also very short. So finding a section to grab onto and keep it all in one ponytail holder, it's very difficult to do that. And when you're doing a twist out, if you wanna have a nice clean twist out, you need to have nice clean even parts and parting short hair into so many neat sections is very difficult because I find myself having to start over multiple times. Number two, once you have those sections, you then have to tackle with uneven lengths within the same section. I'm speaking from my perspective and therefore a big chop and not necessarily a big chop and a shape. I big chopped really just to get rid of the remaining natural hair. So my hair at the top is shorter, the hair at the bottom is longer. There's a variation along that spectrum throughout my entire head. When you're twisting and working with two sections of hair, you have to make sure that those two sections of hair are approximately the same length. Otherwise, you're gonna find yourself having to borrow from one side and therefore risking frizz at takedown. As my hair gets longer, I notice a lot less of this happening. But when you're twisting your hair, you also will notice little wisps of hair peeking out of the twist out. When I do a twist out, I like definition. So it matters to me. The third thing that wastes a lot of time when I am twisting up my hair, being able to separate hair into two equal sections. You're working with a small section and one of those sections makes up three quarters of the hair. You're gonna have a really, really small twist and a reasonably small twist. So if you want to achieve a nice twist out, but you want to do it quickly, I find that it's very hard to choose the right thickness. That is a third situation in which I find myself having to start over. The fourth thing that makes it very difficult to quickly twist my short hair, shorter hair and the need to work in smaller sections by definition means that it's going to take you longer because it's more twists. Another thing making it very time consuming to twist your hair, you'll find that most of these items are just kind of a continuation of the other, but that's just kind of how it works because these are all interconnected things as you work through a consecutive process. I had very, very blunt ends when I first big chopped. Now it's more like, this is the end of your hair. I was really excited about big chopping because one of the biggest concerns that I had when I was transitioning was that I couldn't coil my ends. I had to actually use perm rods. Using perm rods obviously is adding another step to the process, another time waster. Now that my hair is getting longer and the ends are less blunt, I'm finding it a lot easier to coil my ends, but it was very time consuming before. Another obstacle I face when quickly trying to twist my hair is that if your hair is both dense and short, it's harder to distribute product through your hair, just given you have less length to work with. So I find I need to follow the advice that you'll find in pretty much every twist out video ever which is to apply product in each smaller section. And I do find that when you do that, it gives you better results. But when you also have to do so many twists because your hair is short and thick and you need that definition, it's very time consuming. The seventh thing that I find makes it very difficult to quickly do a twist out is having to reapply product to the ends. Blunt ends are just ends that don't coil as well. In order to not have frizzy ends, you do have to reapply product. So it'll have that little paste that'll help to coil the ends. The eighth problem that I face when I'm trying to quickly twist my short hair is that my hair is not long enough in all sections that the curls have had enough time to define themselves. That happens as the hair continues to grow. It kind of figures out who it is and it starts to show its true colors. I've only recently noticed as I've been twisting my hair and it's very possible that this also has to do with the fact that at this point I have trained my hair for twist outs. When you apply a twisting product, I've only recently realized that it helps to define your curls. When it defines your curls, it also clumps your curls. And when it clumps your curls, it's easier to figure out where you should separate. 
you still don't want to have like a massive section and a small section just because that's where it showed that it needs to separate you would then have to go back and resection the hair now i'm understanding that when my hair was even shorter than this why it was so difficult to create sections now it's actually a little bit faster because my hair tells me where it wants to separate number nine just inspired by the ponytail roller set that i did a few weeks ago it's a lot easier to work with short coarse hair is your hair no, what? how would my hair be on a weft? I don't know what this is. That's not my hair. Is it an extension? It's a clip-in. So because it's so much easier to work with short, coarse, dense hair in sections, I now have to section all of my hair before I twist it. I feel like when my hair is a lot longer, I could probably just do like what? Eight chunky twists on either side and be done with it. The tenth thing that I find makes it very time consuming is figuring out the best combination of twisting techniques. I'm going to put this in my hair and I'm going to show you the three ways that I'm aware that you can do a twist. This is the basic twist. This is not a tutorial, but if you're watching this, you probably twist your hair. So this is one way. Actually, I think I'm going to show you four ways. Hopefully that's clear. I realize I'm working with long hair, but that's not the point here. So it's pretty much instead of having one finger there, you have two and then you just kind of wrap it around and you pull it. So this is another way that you can twist. This is a lot harder with short hair because you need to be able to hold on to the bottom of it. And when your hair is short, at some point, it starts to fall out of the palm of your hand. Then there's this other way that I've been experimenting with it recently. I haven't seen anyone else do it. So you do a few. And then you, you know, so like this. You have to be careful and make sure that all of your movements point downwards because if they don't, you're gonna create frizz. Within my very short length of hair to work with, I work with doing like a combination of all four of those techniques. At the top, I find this technique, the one that I just started doing, very helpful. Then when I get to about halfway of my length of hair, I'll then start twisting regularly. And then when I get to the bottom, and this is a technique that I didn't discuss, I will do a rope twist. And the reason that I do this is because your hair is very susceptible to unraveling when it is shorter and when you are not very far removed from your big chop, because again, you're working with blunter ends. When I rope twist the bottom of my hair, it helps the twist to stay in just because you are creating a little bit of like a, a friction area where I feel like it kind of grabs the hair as it tries to unravel. I used to do that throughout my entire head. My hair was really short. I didn't have a lot of length to work with. I needed to figure something out that was not going to just completely unravel my hair when I was done. Having to rope twist your entire head in small sections that are relatively uneven with ends that won't coil, <laughs> you know, the rope twist, which takes longer than a regular twist, was the way to go. I can't solve all of these problems, but I am hoping to solve most of them and not to solve most of them by just having longer hair. I know I mentioned that a lot of them, I have had troubles with them in the past, but not so much now that my hair is growing. All that did was just reinforce to me that it's because my hair was short. I am actively trying to figure out ways to solve those problems and I will be coming out with another video that shows you the hacks that I have created for some of those issues. So I hope you stay tuned. Let me know below in the comments section if you have any other issues that you face when you're twisting your hair. Let me know if you face any of the issues that I have mentioned, or let me know if you don't necessarily see any of these things as problems. It would consistently take me two and a half hours to twist my hair. I then got it down to two hours, which is still very long, and in my latest twist out, I got it down to an hour and 45 minutes. That's still a very long time. And I keep hearing about people twisting for an hour, hour and a half. If you have the same density and like length as me, tell me how you twist your hair for a defined twist out in under an hour and a half. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe if you like my content. I am doing two to three videos a week. Two is my default. I do hair videos on Wednesdays and food related or cooking videos on Sundays. Also check out my Instagram and I will talk to you in my next one. Have a good one.